Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, I have discussed in detail the summary of first 23 chapters of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. In today's lesson, I shall discuss the summary of chapter number 24 to chapter number 42. In the last video, we have seen that the first part of the novel ends in chapter number 23 in a gloomy atmosphere because in that chapter we have found that the relationship between Jane and Charles Bingley is in danger. It is now full of threat from the malicious nature of Bingley's sister Caroline. We have also found that Elizabeth has lost one of her best friends, Charlotte, as Charlotte has married Mr. Collins. So Elizabeth also in a very disappointed mood. And apart from that, Darcy, who actually likes Elizabeth also going further and further from Elizabeth because of Elizabeth's prejudice. So the first part of the book ends in a gloomy atmosphere and in the chapter number 24 the atmosphere darkens more as Jane receives a letter from Caroline Bingley. In that letter, Caroline makes it clear that Charles has decided to leave in London through the winter. So there is no chance of return to the Netherfield. So Jane now in a very disappointed mood and she says that she will resign herself to her fate. When Elizabeth blames Caroline and Darcy, defends them and says that Paras has mistakenly understand Charles' feelings for her. Perhaps she has overestimated Charles' feelings for her. So here again we see that Jane is still a naive girl. In the next chapter, we find that Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner the brother and sister-in-law of Mrs. Bennet has arrived at Longbourn for Christmas and when Elizabeth tells Mrs. Gardiner about Jane's sad relations with Charles Bingley, she proposes to take Jane to London. Perhaps that will bring some change in her mind. But Elizabeth finds no hope that uh, Jane might meet Bingley in London because she is aware of Bingley's soft nature and maliciousness of Bing, uh, Caroline Bingley and the snobbishness of Darcy. At the same time, Mrs. Gardiner has noticed that Elizabeth had some soft corner for George Wickham. And with George Wickham, Elizabeth has been seen in public frequently. So in the next chapter, uh, Mrs. Gardiner, in chapter number 26, Mrs. Gardiner warns Elizabeth about her relationship with Wickham. And Elizabeth assures her that she is not in love with Wickham. And if she takes some decision, she will think before it for a long time and this shows Jane Austen's view about romantic love which is based on feelings and emotion and which Mrs. Gardiner comments is very swift and violent but brief. So here we find that Elizabeth is aware of it. So when Jane reaches London she writes a letter to Elizabeth and in that letter Jane 
informs Elizabeth that Caroline Bingley is aware of Jane's, presen Jane's presence in London, but she has not told anything about it to his brother and that makes Jane aware about Caroline's duplicity, Caroline's real nature. So here we find that now Jane is developing. Jane is now in the way of self-education. Okay, so that's a development that we find in the subplot of Jane and Bingley. In the next chapter, we find that Elizabeth, who has been told a number of times to visit the Hansford personage by her friend Charlotte, now decided to visit the Hansford personage. And Elizabeth goes to Hansford with Sir Lucas and her another daughter Maria. And on the way, Elizabeth visits gardeners and there she finds Jane in a very despondent mood. And there, Elizabeth informs Mrs. Gardiner that at uh, present, Wickham has been quoting one Miss, uh, certain Miss King who has got a fortune, got a property of 10,000 pound. After that, Mrs. Gardiner and Elizabeth makes a plan of a future trip to Lake Country. So here two information is very vital. First one is we can present affair with Miss King and second one is their future trip about which they have planned to Lake Country. So these two plot elements will be elaborated in the later chapters. So after that Elizabeth in the next chapter 28 Elizabeth reaches to the Hansford personages and there she finds her friend Charlotte in a very comfortable house but the her husband Mr. Collins has not changed a bit and she finds Charlotte in a kind of very awkward situation very shameful situation so you can live in the in that kind of house peacefully if you can ignore such a fool like Mr. Collins so that is the bad side of marriage of convenience which is based on only economic facts in the next chapter chapter number 29 this is an important chapter the people of Hansford personages that means Collins, Charlotte, Elizabeth they were invited to Rosings Park Rosings Park means that it is the house of Lady Catherine B. Burr and this C is also the aunt of uh, Darcy. So at that time Elizabeth is in a very bad mood because she is sorry for Jane. Jane is not with her. She cannot share her thoughts with Jane and Jane herself been engrossed in her own sorrowness. Second thing, thing is that Elizabeth has lost the company of Wickham because and now Wickham has been quoting Miss King and Elizabeth accepts the fact because marriage was one of the way to be rich, to be, uh, in, to be secure in future. Okay. And now she finds Charlotte in that kind of situation. So in that kind of mental setup, Elizabeth visit Rosings and there she finds Lady Catherine de Bourg almost unbearable. Okay, so that evening is almost a disaster. Lady Catherine de Bourg appears as a very dictator, dictator person. She monopolizes the conversation. She questions whatever she wants to ask and she dominates over everybody. She appears as a very large loud, foolish and tyrannical. That is Lady Catherine de Bourg. <coughs> In the next uh, chapter, which is chapter number 30, there is a very significant development in the plot as Darcy visits before Easter Rosings Park with some male 
friends and one of them is his cousin fish colonel fish duilian try to remember his name colonel fish duilian and our hero is fish duilian darcy okay so darcy arrives at rosings and they were invited in a dinner party again and in that dinner party colonel fish duilian finds elizabeth really admirable okay so colonel fish duilian finds in elizabeth some rare qualities she is intelligent she is a free thinker she is independent and she has strength of mind so darcy also realizes that elizabeth must have some worthiness and for that reason colonel begins to admire elizabeth so fast okay and darcy or uh, darcy and elizabeth also meets and they talk for some time so now the reader are hoping something that the hero and heroine are coming closing together coming uh, close together now in the next chapter we find uh, that darcy and colonel fish duilian they are visiting the hansford parsonage in a number of times this is uh, something unexpected from darcy and charlotte uh, comments that perhaps darcy is in love with elizabeth and for that reason he is frequently visiting hansford parsonage okay in the next chapter while walking in a morning near the rosing park elizabeth meets with colonel fish duilian and they uh, both talk uh, very friendly in a very friendly manner and at that time colonel informs elizabeth about darcy's one uh, boastful claim that he has saved one of his friend from the inconveniences of a most imprudent marriage so that clicks in elizabeth mind that darcy is actually speaking about charles bingley that friend is charles bingley and the most imprudent marriage is actually the match between charles bingley and jane bennet so okay so elizabeth realizes that caroline bingley is not the real villain darcy is the real villain and he is behind the dark future of jane darcy is responsible so elizabeth is in a very furious mood because she is very protective of jane and she has been nurturing many prejudices against darcy in her mind so at that moment that news act as a catalyst and elizabeth in a very furious mood and in the next chapter we find that elizabeth is reading a very sad letter from jane and at that moment darcy enters this is actually the hansford personage uh, darcy enters into the room and declares his love for elizabeth elizabeth is really stunned she never expect something from darcy but she uh, very uh, rudely refuses okay she rudely refuses darcy's proposal and elizabeth says that she will never forgive darcy for two crime darcy has done one is against her sister jane that she uh, that uh, darcy has destroyed jane's hope of marriage to bingley and the second one is that darcy has uh, betrayed george wickham darcy gives no reply and leaves the room abruptly so the chapter ends here so here we find a clear development in the character of darcy though there are egotism in his proposal but egotism means his proposal is to some extent self centered but we have to realize that darcy here consider elizabeth's worthiness and he had set aside he has forgotten very consciously her family situation her class her social status her economic condition and that's really a great thing in that time okay so darcy has loved elizabeth for what she is and that's a great development in the character of darcy he has cast away his pride his prejudice everything okay so in the next chapter chapter number 35 
Darcy delivers a letter to Elizabeth and in that letter Darcy has defended himself. This is a very important chapter both of this chapter and the letter is also very important. In that letter Darcy defends himself from the two charges. First one is about Jane and Darcy uh, writes a little writes a very short defense that uh, he thinks he is right. He thinks he is right because Jane has never shown her emotions in response to Bingley's love, Bingley's emotion. Okay, so Darcy thought that Jane is indifferent to Bingley's feeling. Okay, and for Wickham, Darcy wrote that the villain has squandered 3000 pounds that Darcy has given him and we can even try it to seduce Darcy's daughter to capture her fortune so that kind of man is George Wickham so in the later we find that Darcy's generousness why because if Darcy like Elizabeth who behaves very rudely if Darcy also like Elizabeth behave rudely adamantly he never will write a letter so Darcy's letter is actually a sign of his generousness his generous nature and whenever he thinks that I am right he writes very bluntly without any sign of ex uh, sign of excuse okay and whether he thinks that perhaps he is wrong he apologizes okay so in the next chapter we find that elizabeth is pondering over the letter so this is actually the 18th century sense 18th century preference for reason over passion both darcy and elizabeth are behaving like rational person and now elizabeth is realizing that perhaps perhaps darcy is right and elizabeth is thinking very rationally the first reason that comes into Elizabeth's mind is that we can present the affair with Miss King that for money we can ended his relationship with Elizabeth okay and he is quoting Miss King because of her 10,000 pound the second thing is that whoever knows Darcy except George Wickham everybody has spoken brilliant words about Darcy. Only George Wickham uh, blames Darcy. Okay, so Elizabeth now realizes that Wickham has spread foul words about Darcy in the community of Meriton for his own purpose. Elizabeth also realizes that he has believed Wickham words because Wickham has flattered her in the first meeting which Darcy has not done and she is also now realizing that Wickham's uh, opening of his secret past incidents to her in the first meeting is also a sign of his bad manner. In the case of Jane, Elizabeth now realizes that Jane has not really shown her feelings to Bingley and that the problem that the defect that Charlotte Lucas has also pointed out in chapter number six of this novel so Elizabeth is also now realizing that really Jane has some faults which Elizabeth has also not till now and Elizabeth is also now feeling very uh, uh, shameful feeling very sorry for her own family because she knows that her family members her father her mother her sisters none of them are right her father is an indifferent person irresponsible her sisters are irresponsible and her mother is a foolish talkative woman and all of them has destroyed Jane's hope of marriage so Darcy is not a wrong man in the uh, next chapter chapter number 37 we uh, chapter number 37 we find that elizabeth is still continuing about her family and she is very in a very kind of disappointed mood that 
the bad relationship of her father and mother, her father's irresponsibility and her indifferentness to her children, the irresponsibility of Lydia and Kitty, their flirtations with other men, all come to her mind and Elizabeth in a very dejected mood. She realizes that Darcy is not wrong in pointed out that her family situation is not good. It is really actually her family situation is bad. So Elizabeth now decides to leave Hansford Parsonage after staying there for six weeks and we find that in chapter number 38 she with Maria leaves Hansford Parsonage and within four hours they reaches Gardiner's home and they are uh, they uh, stay for a few days more and after that Jane and Elizabeth returns home on the way and they are bursting with the news that Miss King has ended her relationship with George Wickham. They are Elizabeth becomes anxious about Lydia and Kitty because she is now aware of the real nature of George Wickham. Okay. After returning home, Elizabeth tells Jane, informs Jane two news. First one is that Darcy's proposal to her. Second news is that Wickham's real, uh, Wickham's past story, Wickham's nature. So Jane's, uh, two, before Jane, uh, Elizabeth has ha, Elizabeth has hidden two facts. First one is that uh, Elizabeth. First one is that Darcy's real nature, because everybody knows Darcy a bad person, and it will be very difficult to make everyone understand. Elizabeth does not open. The facts about Darcy's real nature. Second one is that being this love for Jane. Elizabeth also hide that fact because it can make Jane more disappointed. Okay. In the next chapter, chapter number 41, we find that Lydia and Kitty, Lydia and Kitty, they are very uh, disappointed that the army regiment are now shifting from Meriton to Brighton and they are now go they, uh, they now go to Brighton in a trip and some Mrs. Foster one of officer's wife invites Lydia with her to Brighton so this is actually a great threat for Lydia and Elizabeth cautions her father and requests her to control Lydia because if he does not control Lydia now it she will be out of control okay she will be in a position where no change can but her father is still indifferent and he says that the experience which will come to Lydia in that trip will perhaps make her a better human being okay so Elizabeth finds that her father is completely wrong in her opinion because Lydia and Kitty, Lydia and Kitty both are in their teenage and they are unaware about the threat and they are manhunter, flatter, flatacious kind of girls. So they must be controlled and that trip can be a disaster. But she feels she feels helpless. In the next chapter, uh, we find that Elizabeth trip, Elizabeth trip to Lake Country with Mrs. Gardiner. Elizabeth, uh, as they have planned earlier, the Elizabeth uh, goes with Gardiner family to the Lake Country, and in the month of July, they were heading northward, and they were somewhat near the Pemberley Estate, the estate of. Darcy. So now Elizabeth is in no mood to enter into the Darcy's estate. But when the chambermaid of the inn where they were staying tells them that Darcy is not at home now, Elizabeth agrees to go there. And here the second volume of the book ends. So at the end of second volume, 
the atmosphere is still melancholic but some hopes are there now the first one is that darcy has proposed to elizabeth and elizabeth has started to work on the way of education this novel is actually about elizabeth's education elizabeth realizations of her faults and she has started to work on that way she will appear beautiful gradually because of the baptism of fire because she will be purified by the by the fire fire means here her own bad experience her own suffering so she is heading now towards that moment okay and she is now in close proximity of darcy's home the second one is that we are now aware that jane's affair with bingley charles bingley can be renewed again as charles and jane still loves each other okay they still love each other the third thing is here that jane is also developing okay the fourth thing is that which is a threat that is in spite of knowing george wickham's real nature elizabeth fails to stop lydia's trip to brighton and that actually brings a disaster in the third part of the novel so the novel the second part of the novel ends with some hopes and a threat okay so if you have not seen the first video in which i have discussed the summary of first 23 chapters so first make sure to watch that video the link will be provided in the description so i am concluding here thank you for watching